everyone and welcome back uh, to my floss tube. I'm Mel, Wordy Stitches here on YouTube and on Instagram and this is a channel about uh, primarily cross stitch, uh, sometimes embroidery and some other sorts of crafts I do but uh, mostly cross stitch and today I think it will be cross stitch. Hang on, I've just got an alarm set. I'm just going to remember to turn that off because no one needs the alarm going off, right? Okay, so uh, Welcome back if you are one of my subscribers. There's been a few more of you recently, so hello. Um, thanks for joining me again. And uh, if you are a new person who's wandered on to this corner of YouTube, as I said, there's a channel about cross stitch, embroidery, bit of sewing, bit of quilting, a uh, bit of knitting and crochet. If that's not your thing, uh, then maybe keep wandering. But if you're curious, uh, welcome. And uh, if you enjoy what you see, then you know, like, subscribe, do all those. Uh, hit the little notification button, do all that YouTube stuff that we're supposed to tell you to do. So anyway, today is Friday, March the 31st. I think it's been pretty much a month since my last cross stitch. I think the last one was on the 28th. This is floss tube number 15, I believe. And I think I said um, in number 14 that I was going to have a busy March. I did have a busy March, but I somehow managed to do quite a bit of stitching as well. And uh, quite a bit of purchasing. I don't know what's happened. I think I just lost my mind this month and seem to have bought all the things. So this uh, this could be a little bit of a longer floss tube than my normal half an hour or so. But let's see how we go. Um, the picture might look a bit different. I am recording this today on my laptop, not my phone. I did get a new laptop last year and... You know, for the first couple of times, the quick time recording worked fine. And then the last couple of times I tried to use it, it didn't want to record. But today it seems to be recording fine. So we will cross our fingers. Um, I may pause a few times during the recording just to make sure that things are progressing as they should. Um, but fingers crossed it all works. So, you know, I think it just makes the view a bit better. But it's a bit quicker than transferring things from my phone, etc. And uh, a bit easier to look at the camera because it's in the centre, not in some weird place like it is in the phone. So anyway, uh, let's get on with this thing. This may be a little bit rambly. I spent most of the month um, editing my, well, what will be my next book, and it's just gone off to the uh, actual editor this afternoon. Uh, so it's been a long couple of weeks and I'm a little bit punchy. So we'll see what happens. All right, but let us start with whips. Now, as I said, I've had a few finishes, so I've only got one ongoing whip that I have worked on this month. Uh, so let's start with that. Um, so that is, let me just move my needle minder. This is my temperature library from Dr. Christie. Christie's Corner Needle, she is on YouTube here and on Etsy. Um, I'm a little bit behind this month. As it is the end of the month, you can see I've only stitched half the books, but that's because I got a little bit obsessed with some other cross stitch projects as well. But I will uh, catch most of those up in the next day or so. But that's where I am. Um, March has been uh, a bit up and down weather-wise. We've had some warm weather, we've had some quite hot weather, and we've had some cold days as well. So the last few days have definitely been chillier and wetter and greyer, and I really hope we're not going to get to April and then end up uh, with going straight into winter like we did last year. So I'm um, stitching this on Toasted Mellow Linen from number 12 Stitch Co, which is the same one I test, stitched last year, and just one strand, so it's 36 counts. I'm doing one strand rather than two last year, because uh, this year I'm doing highs and lows temperatures, so the little stripes are the low temperatures, and I just thought that might get a little bit crowded uh, trying to fit that in with two strands. So one strand. So that is my temperature library. So that's my only um, ongoing whip, as I said, that I worked on this month. Let me just put that away in the bag. Sorry, the cat's just circling yeah. something at my feet. So we'll see what, what she's all excited about. She may jump up in the background somewhere. Okay, so finishes. So my whip go calls this month were uh, in the library by Mojo Stitches, which we'll get to shortly. Okay, good. She's going to start playing with her noisiest toy. Um, and then my other one was a free choice small. And I think last time I said I was thinking about doing um, a pattern from Christiane, one of Christiane Dahlbeck's books. So she's a German cross-stitch designer and who I quite like. I've got a couple of her books. Uh, I think if you're an Aussie, you can really only get them from Casa Sanina. Um, 
So I did this little daisy, which is just really cute. Um, I played around with the colours a bit. Oh, I can't get that. <laughs> Bit hard to work out which angle to hold it um and i've just hoop framed it and <laughs> looking at it now it looks like i probably should have put a piece of batting behind it but on the wall you can't really tell and that's fine um so this is interesting because obviously all the instructions are in german and she actually does these like not half cross stitches but stitches that are like one thread high and two across so full crosses but um yeah at least that's what i'm interpreting the pattern at from because i don't mean read german and that's what they look like to me and when I was stalking Instagram for everyone who stitched who's German who stitched them that's what they looked like to do so it just looks like I give a little bit more shape with still having the fullness of a, a full stitch rather than just a half stitch like lots of uh, cross stitch designers would use or quarter stitches and things so that was interesting and I like daisies so that's pretty many pretty things in her books that I would like to stitch so that's a fully finished object look at that we're continuing our trend of fully finished objects uh, the second thing that I did and this one is the front of mojo stitches because she did a floss tube and she um, can't remember I talked about this last time and I was waiting for them maybe I did but anyway mojo stitches on one of her recent floss tubes talked about cascade house silks which is another Aussie uh, silk dyer that I'd never heard of um, apparently big in the embroidery world uh, but she does like stranded silks I believe she's in Creswick somewhere up near Ballarat I think um, and you know I'm I'm doing my long dog sampler with silks for you and that silk is gorgeous and their silks for you big ha hanks are definitely really good value um, but her individual scale skeins are quite big too um, whereas these when mojo stitches i just i'll just try a couple of colors um, that she had brought into her shop so i picked two sort of pinky reds i call them pinks she might say they're reds um but anyway so these are like five or six dollars which compared to most sort of over dyed hand dyed silk brands that come in from overseas etc that's a bargain i think um joanna said seven and a half meters so it's a bit more than a bit less than cottage guarded threads but a bit more than most like um gentle arts and things so good value lovely to stitch with um so i just wanted to do something small to try them out on um so i just did this little quaker motif on just a scrap i think this is probably let weathered it's like a mystery piece i had from uh, number 12 stitch coat um, and I think it's probably weathered it's close enough to the other piece of weathered I have and I actually um, one of my motives was to try the silk and my other one was because I wanted to do something small to try hem stitching a piece with and yeah it's not perfect but it worked I watched um, a tutorial by Krista M West uh, she does like a lot of sort of folk style um, cross stitch embroidery table runners and all sorts of interesting things but she has a really good really clear um, tutorial on how to hem stitch um, I think Susan Stanley from a stitch in time has one as well so but there you go so this is just the the multicolored that one they don't have names so this is number four two nine five and this is three eight nine oh so I think I think I probably ordered these in the last one and I might have said I was waiting for them so we won't count them against this month's absolute pile of purchases that we're going to go through. Though some of them, to be fair, um, I had ordered and I was waiting for them. So I didn't buy all of, all of everything I'm going to talk about in March. Uh, so that's another kind of start and finish. I guess it's hemstitched so I can then do, with, uh, do something else with it. Um, and then my next one, which I can't show you the actual finished object because it was a present. Um, but I will show you a picture and I'll show you the pattern. So a while ago I bought this pattern by Pantini. Pantini, it's called What's Your Superpower? I turn grass into wool. What's your superpower? Now my sister-in-law uh, is an indie yarn dyer and I thought this uh, pattern would entertain her. But I knew I wanted to kind of tweak it for her um, and make it like a little bit more personalised to her and her business. So um that I, I was kind of pondering that for a long time and then the other day when I was doing something uh, in my very messy spare room where all my craft supplies are I came across like a like a little remnant ball of one of her yarns that I had used to knit some socks with and I thought you know maybe I could do the sheep 
with one of her yarns. Now I've got a lot of like sock weight, so that's quite thin, but still a lot thinner than a, than a cross stitch thing. So I thought, well, if I just do um, 10 stitch, uh, then it should fit. It'll be a bit thick and puffy, but it should fit. And then I thought, well, actually, if you do 10 stitch, so, you know, half of them this way, and then the row on top going that way, like a knit stitch makes that sort of shape, a little V shape. So, so that is what I did. And I changed the words and that's how it came out. Don't look at the tree too closely. I completely forgot how to count in that tree. So it's a little bit of a mutant tree. My apologies to Puntini Puntini because apparently I cannot count. But yeah, so I make yarn fabulous. What's your superpower is how it ended up. And that purpley pinky blue yarn is just her yarn. And I manipulated it a little bit so I had the... Um, because variegates from like a pale purple, it's kind of looking white on there, but it's a pale purple um, through to deeper purples and blue. So I just um, kind of had two pieces and I was fussy cutting a little bit. So I got the light and dark stripes. So, but she really loved it. So that was good. Um, and it was a fun stitch and fun to sort of like design the missing letters that I didn't have <laughs> to make them vaguely look like um, the font that uh, Puntini Puntini had come up with. So that's another fully finished object. I don't know who I turned into all these fully finished objects. Um, let me see. And then my big finish for the month. And this is why my bookshelf is behind because... Uh, so my other whip go call for the month, as I said, was in the library after the daisies. And look, it's finished. I just creased it. I ironed it and then I put it down on the table and clearly I have creased it, but... Um, look, the colours are more vibrant. It's looking a bit washed out in this light. Oh, there you go. That's that's probably a little bit more um, what the colours are. Oop. And then, yeah. So this was fun. I think I started this in December and it was a whip-go call in January and in February. So I did five or six days in both those months. And then in this month I've probably done like 11, 12, 14 days on it. Um, I forget exactly how big it is. It was very pretty. I love it. It was a fun stitch. I did screw up in a few places, but I decided not to frog. Um, my border, when I got down one side, was one thread out. And I was like, how did that happen? And then by the time I figured out where I'd, uh, due to the nature of linen, had a very skinny thread or something and, and managed to do a cross that was only one thread high. Um, I was like, I am not ripping out and nearly the entire side of, of this border. This border uh, is like quite confetti heavy. There's like, it looks like one green because it's very good. It's two different greens and the creamy color. And I thought, uh, 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 I'm, not, I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. So I just fudged the other side to make the meet up. And if anyone peers closely at my cross stitch and goes, why is that stitch on that side three? threads high and why is one on that side one thread high well I'll say because you know human beings make mistakes and it still looks awesome you cannot tell so that's good I think there's a I think the cat is like once one row too low as well because I lost my ability to count but I love it I will have to find a frame I think it's about eight inches square maybe eight by ten I will have to check the pattern and find a frame, but thank you, Joe from Mojo Stitches. That was a most fun stitch. Very me, being a big old bookworm. And then, uh, so these are the threads. These are from Joe's bookshelf range with cottage garden threads. And the beauty of, because I stitched that on 36 count with one strand, is I've got lots left to make other pretty things. I have to say this is my favorite. So this is um, anonymous. Surprisingly, it's a blue teal, but I really like this colour. I've actually ordered a few more skeins um, so that I've got enough to maybe do a small monochromatic sampler in this colour because I just think it would be really pretty. So I'm just looking for the right one now. But yes, it's lovely. Okay, so that is in the garden. That is done. That is one big, bigger whip off the pile, which is always nice. Um, okay, so... And then I've got a couple of other fully finished objects, so stuff that I had finished earlier. This one I'd actually done in February, and I've got to show you 
So this is um, Smash the Patriarchy. Now I'm just realizing that I didn't look up the design and is it pixel pixel stitch? It might be pixel pixel stitch. I will, I will, I will put it up here somewhere, but there you go. Also done in some DMCs and some CGT nudies. That's Cottage Garden Threads, so every so often they put up packs of mist dyes and, and things that didn't quite work out and they call them nudies and there's no labels. But they're, they're fun to get. And then the other one I framed was my Lindy Stitches Broad Build Hummingbird from her Bird Crush Club, which I was in for the first few months before the US Postal Service decided to make the international postage crazy for a while. But now she's releasing those patterns, so I'll be able to buy the other burbs that I like. So I've actually got the start of a little burb wall now. I think I put a picture on my Instagram. <laughs> it's about three things, but it's a beginning. We all have to start somewhere. So those are my finished objects and my finishes. Okay, let's take a sip. I feel like I'm talking fast. My apologies. All right, so what did we buy? Okay, so let's start with the only thing I bought at market for the pre-ordered for market. Oh, I'm, going to, I'm going to be restrained because I, you know, was trying to be sensible and then threw that out the window apparently. So, so I bought Kindred Spirits by um, Karina Kogan because I just really like those two. Best buddy historical ladies. I may, sorry, purists, I may pink the red dress up a bit. I haven't pulled the threads yet to see what the colours are in real life, but it's that sort of rusty red. I may go to sort of like a, a more berry pink, just because that's more me. And yeah, I haven't yet decided whether I'll stitch the entire dark, dark bits up the corner. Anyway, we'll see. This is um, in the pile. I'm not going to start it just yet. So that arrived. Um, and with it, uh, I ordered some threads for another project, which is in my plans, which I'll talk about, and the uh, couple of extra skeins of Anonymous, because you can't have a chart travelling alone, can you? So I got that from Stitch and Time in Hobart. Um, so that was purchase number one. Uh, I bought the silks, which I've already told you about, but I think I ordered them. I bought a couple of needle minders, and now I just realise that I don't have them. So hang on. Okay, I'm back. Slightly longer break than I expected. I cannot find those needle minders, which is weird because like I have like a metal side table uh, that has, you know, edges thick enough to put my needle minders on. And that's where I keep them. So clearly I have tucked them into a project bag slowly somewhere thinking, oh, I need to show these on floss tube. And now I cannot work out which, which bag that might be or where they are. So just imagine two quite cute <laughs> needle minders from Ginger Stitch AU. Okay, so let's talk about ooh, what will I do next? I'm just trying to work out uh, the best. Okay, let's talk about uh, patterns. Okay, so I bought uh, this is the Humble Sampler by Mojo Stitches, which kind of I guess she released around needlework time, needlework market time. She didn't do market, um, so. It's really lovely. So I will probably just stitch these flowers and Joe has actually released um, like a colorway that's brighter than this. That's the colors of the back of the sampler. And I suspect I will probably do that when I do that. I've kind of decided that I'm probably never gonna be someone who stitches a lot of big samplers, but I may start buying bigger samplers and just stitching the parts that I find really cute um, for small, Small walls, small house, all that sort of stuff. Uh, get to stitch more things. But yeah, I, I think those flowers are really pretty. So I think I'll probably do the brighter palette, but I may end up doing this one. But anyway, so I bought that one. Uh, and then, just because a few people had sales, I wasn't going to buy any more patterns. But what can you do when people, designers you like, have sales? So uh, I've bought PDFs, so I will show you pictures. Okay. Okay, so the first one was Carolyn Manning, whose patterns I have admired for a long time. I think when I first started watching Floss Tube, 
uh, one of the first posthumers I found was Brenda Handwick Maniac, and she was doing a Carolyn Manning, I think it was Beachcomber, um, which I really liked. Uh, but they're quite big and they're like full coverage, so I've never bought one. But she was having a sale, so I thought I'm going to buy a few of her patterns and try. So I bought uh, this one. So this is Autumn Romance, which is one of her garden labyrinth rather than one of her really big um, full coverage uh, quilting based ones. But I just thought that's really pretty. Just need to find some nice sort of terracotta fabrics. I had a mystery fabric from Number 12 Stitch Co. that was sort of that colour. But I don't know if that's one of her regular colours. I may have to hit her up in her mess, link her up in her messages and say, what do you think this fabric was uh, that you did for this piece? And see if she's going to make it again. Otherwise, I'll have a look around. But I just thought that was really pretty. I like those sort of greens and pink purples. I think that's done in Veldani. Uh, which is kind of hard to get your hands on here. Um, so I don't know if I'll hunt around for that or whether I will do something else. And then I bought... Uh, this one, so this is one of her Smalls collections, and this is these sort of terracottas and blues are the colours of the Beachcomber one that I liked. But I thought, let's start with a small one and do, but I'll probably do uh, one or two of these separately, or maybe the top two, but I'll start with ooh, that one, I think. That one or that one are the two I like best out of this. Um, and and see, see if I enjoy doing them before I embark on a big one. So I bought that one, and her patterns are really reasonably priced. And then I, I bought one of the big ones. So this is Sea Glass. So she has like a few series where like they're essentially, they're the same pattern, but she does all these gorgeous colorways. So I just really like this tealy bluey green one. Surprising no one. I picked the tealy bluey green one. So that's that one. So no intention to start any of those immediately. I will keep my eyes out for the Autumn Romance one uh, fabric. But yeah, I have... Pl plenty of things to stitch which begs the questions why we lose our mind and keep buying stuff anyway and then um mama witch cross stitch had a sale as well i'm yet to stitch one of her patterns but i have bought about five of them so i bought this whale with the octopus that i really liked i am a fan of both whales and our cephalopod future overlords the octopus are very cool very smart creatures not sure what the butterflies are doing down there, but we're just going with underwater butterflies. That is fine. If a whale can play with an octopus and grow toadstools on his tail, he can have underwater butterflies. Or she can have underwater butterflies. Whatever makes you happy. And then speaking of <laughs> octopus, maybe a squid. Why not have a unicorn octopus? That's just really cool. Um, she does show them with some different background fabrics because there's no way, um, no way I'm stitching something large on a black fabric. I don't like stitching on dark fabrics. My eyes get very sad, even with magnification. So, but she shows it on some bl blues and teals and things, which I think would look cute too. Uh, so that one. Okay. And then... What else did I buy? I'm looking at my list. I'm looking at my list. Okay, so I'm gonna leave the fabric to last because that will tie in with some of it ties in with my plans. All right, so then, um, so you know, we're all in a few Facebook groups. I'm in a slow stitching Facebook group, and someone posted a picture of a a really cool bookmark that looked like a cross stitch at first, but then when you looked closer, she, and she said it was Japanese embroidery, and I thought, oh, well, it's not. Sashiko, so I've done some Sashiko so embroidery because um, it was counted thread. And then, so I did a little bit of Googling and it's called Kogan. It's a Japanese counted thread method with all these very geometric patterns um, that you can use on all sorts of things. So I thought, well, that sounds good. And I had to buy a book long ago. This lady, Susan Briscoe, I think I've got her Sashiko so book as well. Um, so yeah, let me... Let me find some bits that don't have patterns. So, you know, you can do things like this. Little bookmarks, little cards. Let me find some other. I just thought it was cute. And, you know, it's good to learn new techniques. So, you know, you've got little coasters with various patterns. So, I think there's like sort of three schools of Kogan embroidery. It was used like Sashiko and Borrow and stuff for reinforcing and clothing and decorating clothing originally. 
now people do all sorts of cool things with it. And one thing I thought was interesting in this book, so she was talking about finishing, and she had one piece that she'd finished in a frame, and it wasn't it wasn't a big piece, um, just you know, so like a, a photo sized frame. And she in the finishing instructions it says uh, that she just ironed interfacing onto the back, and then just put it in the frame like a photo. So I assume. You know, I put interfacing on the back of stuff to make a pillow, but, you know, usually a fairly soft and flexible interfacing, but maybe a heavier interfacing. Um, if you did that, that would make it quite stiff, and then you wouldn't have to stretch it if it's just a small piece. Uh, I still think for a large piece it's probably worth uh, going to the trouble of stretching it properly, but for a smaller piece where you don't necessarily ever want to be able to pull it out of that frame and do something different with it, that's probably not a bad rapid way of framing something um, that's small and maybe fiddly to stretch. So I may have to have a poke around Spotlight and find some heavier weight um, interfacing and try that on a small. So I bought that. That was a book. I'm a terrible oh, craft. I love craft books and I'm someone like if I get interested in something, I kind of like to read all the things about it and know all the things about it. Oh, I should have said for the Quaker, the Quaker that I did. Um, so I think on Brennan and Laura, they were talking about, um, uh, what's her name? Katie Strachan, um, pulling out Quaker motifs from, I think a modern folk embroidery pattern or something to do some smalls. Um, and it was really pretty. So I thought, well, that's a good idea because I, I, I really do like Quaker patterns and the motifs. And so I was sort of poking around going, has anyone written a book of just like Quaker motifs? And, you know, the history of Quaker samplers. There are books on the history of Quaker samplers. They're all re re relatively old and uh, you're going to have to sell a kidney to buy one. Um, but I did found on Etsy uh, from Quaker Sampler Delight. And so they do a, a magazine that's like samplers and Quaker stuff. But they've also got a book that you can buy that's got just like 100 or so, maybe more, uh, Quaker motifs in PDF so you just download it and then you pick the ones you like so that's where that one came from so it's just one of the motifs out of that book and you know they've got borders and they've got the little bits so I could have put like some little other little medallions around it and stuff so you could build your own Quaker sampler so that would be cool so yeah shout out to them I don't think yeah I bought that a little while ago I can't remember whether I showed it or not anyway uh, Quaker motifs we do like Quaker motifs and I do like the idea of as I said, a sampler excerpting, um, you know, because modern folk embroidered patterns are lovely, but a lot of them are ginormous. I know he has some small, even, even some of his small patterns are big, but, uh, you know, I was looking at the stitch along that he's doing this year. Uh, what's it called? Sky, something Skyward? Breaking Skyward? Building? Anyway, something. It is beautiful. It is enormous. Even, and like, I think in his floss tube, he talked about... So it's got a central medallion with a tree motif and he's he's done a separate pattern that's got four alternative trees and even that central medallion is something like 120 by 120 so the whole the, the whole thing must be like 300 by 400 or something it is massive um and like stitch heavy he does a lot of you know monochromatic or two color stitching where the fabric is part of the basically one of the colors it ends up being so it's is it a CC? That's the one where it's the negative, but a combination of a CC and just quite dense stitching. So I'm not sure if I'm ever going to stitch a whole big one of his. I may, um, but yeah, like the trees are beautiful and I've done like one of his little pin cushions and stuff. But yeah, I think that idea of like, if you like a big Quaker sampler and you go, do I want to stitch that whole thing? Then you buy it. If you stitch a few smalls from it, it's quite cute. I quite like the idea of doing like a, you know, a Quaker, um, what do you call it? Bunting or something where you make the little banners and you do a, do a, do one motif on each one. Um, as I've said before, I'm not really a seasonal decorator, but I was like, oh, you could do, you could do that for a few things. Like have, make some garlands or buntings or stuff. It's probably not a very new idea. But I was like, that could be something that's fun, you know, with all my copious spare time. <laughs> um, okay. Let me go through my list. So those are cross stitch patterns. All right, and then the other idea, which I did, I think I mentioned last time that I had another idea about finishing because I was finishing some stuff. So, um, and I had ordered a thing, I think, at the time, and then it arrived um, a week or so ago because it was coming from the UK. So, 
you know, like lots of people, I've got lots of smalls and unfinished projects. I have this year I started finally <laughs> managing to finish a few, but there's always going to be more smalls than uh, smaller projects and pieces than I necessarily want to make into pin cushions and pillows because I don't even have places to put lots of balls of little pin cushions and pillows. But um, so there's a few embroidery artists that I follow that. Uh, KJ Turner and Anne Wood and sort of more that slow stitching meditative freehand embroidery sort of style of thing um, and Anne Wood for her 100 day project is doing like a a stitched book um, where each day you sort of sew a page and in the end you assemble it into a book um, and she's got a pattern of how the pages work up and you know how they fit together sort of a tab and slot very nifty thing and KJ Turner um, does you know, much like a temperature library or something, she has these big pieces of cloth and she just stitches a small square every day, um, which I don't know if I would have time to do. <laughs> on top of on top of doing a temperature, maybe in a year I wasn't going to do a temperature library, on top of doing a temperature chart and everything else I stitch, but I was sort of thinking, you know, I really like that stuff, I'm quite drawn to it. Um, you know, I like the relaxed nature of it, precision of cross stitch is awesome, but I also, you know, there's part of me that I quite like freehand embroidery as well and that sort of looser style. And then, you know, Michelle Bendy, uh, Bendy Stitchy, she has sort of art journals um, where she sticks some of her smalls in and puts stickers and, and um, those sorts of things in them and sort of glues them in and journals a bit about them. And I thought, well, that's a good idea too, but those end up being quite thick and chunky, I think, because, you know, the fabric's quite thick. So I was thinking, oh, maybe you could combine like the idea of like a stitched book with finishing some of your um, smalls into it and then maybe doing some other freehand embroidery and stuff on like the opposite page or around it or journaling. And I thought, oh, yeah, and, you know, there, there are people on YouTube and things who do that sort of stuff and have patterns. And I was just like, okay, before I fall down the rabbit hole of working out how to do this by myself, and, you know, spending five million hours going, oh, what fabric do I want to stitch on and buying all the things. I thought, I'm just going to Google stitch book again. And on Etsy, uh, Kim Edith popped up and she makes basically blank stitch books for you to do this sort of stuff on. So she has, like she does, like sort of art journaling books on them. So she puts photos in and text and all that sort of stuff. This. but she makes the she makes the blanks so this is just a nice sort of cotton cotton canvas is it light cotton sort of you know embroidery quality cloth and uh, the smart thing about these is because they're on the rings so you can pull out the page to stitch on it but because the fake you fold the page back in half to put it in the rings so the back is hidden so you don't have to make your back back really perfect or cover it or anything like that so the Anwood ones you sort of make your front and back and you, you have to sew each page together um, to make the front and back whereas this one I thought might be a bit quicker so I'm going to try seeing how that goes and put some of my smalls in here and do some other embroidery and stuff around it and with it and I thought I would buy Kim's book because she talks about different ways of putting text on there if I want to make some notes um, including photos including other bits of you know ephemera and stuff I just thought it might be a little bit inspiring so Kim Edith she's on Etsy she also has her own website which I think if you're in the UK you can probably order from the website rather than Etsy um, and she sells extra pages and things but I sort of thought well if I start with one of these I will either you know buy more if I just decide you know I can't be bothered faffing around making my own or I will learn to make my own if I if I decide I like it um, but that 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 is a project I'm going to attempt so let's let's see when we actually dive, <laughs> dive into that so yeah so I'd ordered that last time and it arrived this month but so it's just sort of I guess a5 sized so it would only be like small things but you can make a bigger one that you could put um, bigger pieces than that in so we'll just see we'll see but I just thought because you know you could um, you can hem stitch things or you could just fold over and, and stitch a loose hem as you stitch them in because then you can and if you don't like machine stitch them in or anything you just hand stitch them in um, carefully you can pull them out again and do other things with them 
unpick the stitches if you wanted to in the future but I just thought that was an interesting an interesting concept sort of a clash a clash of a few things that have been stewing in my brain um, and then uh, so the other thing I ordered so cottage garden threads which I talk about a bit on this channel and I really enjoy their threads uh, they do stranded cotton for cross stitch and things um, they also do pearl cotton um, I don't know if they started with the pearl cotton and moved into it so so they're a company from South Gippsland which is where I grew up um, they're based in Mirbu North which is actually one of the small towns right next to the slightly larger town that I grew up in um, and it's run by a mother and daughter uh, Pam and Katie and I like the threads I like supporting a, a local business and uh, at the moment sadly Pam has some health issues so they have a pre-order at the moment um, called Hearts for Pam and it's a bunch of designers who have been very kind and uh, agreed to make uh, designs so I think there might be don't hold me to this like 20 around 20 somewhere around 20 designers who are going to make designs um, and so they're running a pre-order so you can get a thread pack so they've pulled a selection of I think it's 10 cottage garden threads from a variety of their ranges um, which I assume each designer is going to make their design kind of like the the thread packs for the Moo the Merrier and the, and the, the tea time stuff that was done at um, market this year uh, they'll all use the same thread pack they haven't said that but that is that is my assumption that I am making if that turns out to be wrong I'm only <laughs> they haven't actually announced but so you can order the thread pack you can order uh, all the PDFs or you can order a bundle where you get both um, and uh, some other bits and pieces. Uh, so I ordered the full bundle because it's a complete bargain. I think the retail value is about $350, I think it said, and it was $100 Aussie dollars. So if you're in the US, that's even more of a bargain. I don't know what the shipping is, but uh, the US dollar is very strong against the Aussie dollar at the moment. Um, so I think the pre-order is open for another uh, week. I think it was going to run for two weeks. It's been open about a week. So it's uh, open for another week. Um, and then it will be delivering in July, which is when they are anticipating that Pam will be uh, back up and running. So she is their head dyer. She comes up with their colour color recipes. They have staff who can dye and things. They've got repeatable recipes. It's all good. But um, yeah, so I just wanted to spot them and, you know, I'm not going to say no to adding uh, a bunch of patterns so from some cool designers. So Lindy Stitches, I think Michelle Bendy, uh, Mojo Stitches. Uh, there's a couple of embroiderers. Uh, so Amy Callista and is it Veronique? Veronique, who is Wattle and Vero? Wattle Vero, something like that. So some of the other embroidery designers who have Hairs Nest Stitchery, who did the kit that I'm making my map from. Um, so a few embroidery designers and a bunch of cross stitch designers will be making hearts. Uh, I assume it's heart based. It's called Hearts for Pam. So I am making the extrapolation that the, the patterns will feature hearts in some way. And I don't know whether they will want you to stitch one and send it to Pam and, and then stitch as many as you want for yourself or what, what, what the thing is. But um, anyway, I wanted to support them. So I've jumped on that. So that is something to look forward to later in the year in July or August where we'll be in the depths of dreary weather so that will be a nice little pick-me-up and then the last thing that I bought that is not cross stitch related sorry I'm looking on a lot about non cross stitch so during the pandemic when we're all scrolling Instagram and watching floss tube and other things I kept stumbling across uh, so I'd seen Sue Spargo quilts before and she's got that very folk art style um, which is very cool and like the embellishments and everything is cool um, was not my style but then during the pandemic she did a, a project where she was demonstrating a stitch a day and she does um, there a wool, wool applique embroidery where she has a backing piece and she does like circles and then each circle gets embellished in a different way and some of them are just really pretty I've seen some really pretty projects doing that didn't get it into it at the time because I was crocheting and doing cross stitch and, and all that sort of stuff but I, whenever I see one of these Sue Spargo embellished circle things pop up on Instagram because I follow her and other people do them as well. I keep going, that's really pretty. I would like to do that. Um, so I thought, 
or rather than go out and buy it or anything. Uh, so one of the things I had seen before, so she has a kit for a needle roll, uh, and it's called Tranquil Garden. So it's this. Uh, so I bought I bought the kit with all the wool and the backing fabric and stuff is in it. So I'll have to cut it up and do it. I haven't done wool applique before, so it's going to be an adventure. I have not yet bought all the threads. So that will be next month's little <laughs> little splurge. I tell you, by the time I buy all the threads and things and some some of the needles, um, they like I've I've done some of this um, embellishment style, you know, raised stitches and drizzle stitches and um, woven stitches and things before in a couple of uh, embroidery samplers that I've done from Rebecca Ringquist. Um, who also has some good classes about it on Creative Bug. Um, so I just thought, I'm going to pull that out. That's how pretty that is. Look how pretty. And then, yes, it comes, it comes a really... I don't, know, I don't know if there's a picture of the inside. Hang on. Yeah, so that's what it'll look like on the inside. So you get the little cork things that tell you the needle sizes because you do the specific sort of... Milliner's needles and cruel needles and a few specific things for what Sue does. Um, and she also sells a book that demonstrates all the uh, all the stitches. It's called Creative Stitches or something. And that's the thing to be aware of with most of her patterns is you need the book separately. So it will give you uh, the one for each one, but it doesn't show you how to do the stitches in the individual patterns. You need the book. But it's a cool book, so... That, that is my other splurge. It's going to be the world's most expensive needle roll by the time it's done. <laughs> and I'll probably just go, oh, it's too nice to use. I'll just hang it on the wall somewhere. But that is right. It will be good. I will learn some fun stitches, which I can then use in my stitch book and things. All right. So, oh, gosh, I think I feel like I've been going for hours already. Well, they have been going for close to an hour other than my little break in the middle. Okay, so then let's talk fabric. So... I hadn't actually bought much fabric, um, so when I ordered the Teresa Covet, um, so that the model was stitched on fox and rabbit flannel flower, and I thought, oh, well that's good, Mel, because a while back you bought a piece of fox and rabbit flannel flower, so that that is this one. Oh. This is flannel flower, so it's got a bit of mottling. It's a sort of very. It's a little bit yellower in real life than it is here, but it's a very pale, soft, uh, yellowy beige, I guess, with a bit slightly purpley, purpley that mottling is. And so I thought, oh, that's good. I've got the fabric. <laughs> and then when I got the pattern, of course, uh, so this fabric is 13 by 17. So what's that? A uh, uh, white eight or whatever you call it. Um, and the pattern needs, uh, with a three inch border, I think I worked out, it would be 15 and a half by 16. So it's just that little bit too narrow. And even though on the pattern, like it's framed quite tightly. So I don't know if I need the border, but I'm just not comfortable going in knowing that my fabric is basically an inch too, like quite narrow. And it's gonna be hard to put on a hoop or a cue snap or something as well. So I thought, well, I need, um, some other, I need a bigger piece of fabric. And of course, because that pattern was very popular, um, at market, you cannot find, uh, well, at least not 36 count flannel flower, a bigger piece in Australia for love or money. Uh, but I did find, so I was poking around a stitch in time and she had, uh, fox and rabbit. So this is white clay. Um, So it's not, it's a little bit more grey and it's, it doesn't have the mottling, but that Teresa Cogat is quite, it, it's nearly full coverage. It's not quite full coverage, but there's a lot of coverage. So I'm not that fussed that it's not as modelled. Um, it, it's, it's a similar sort of vibe, I thought. So I've got a bigger piece of that, that that will fit on. So that's white clay. Um, and then, because you can't just order one piece of fabric, I got a smaller piece of ballet slippers because I've um, seen a few people 
show this colour on YouTube, and I thought it looked really pretty. So it's quite an... It's a pink, but it's a very nudish pink. So, yeah, like if you've ever worn ballet slippers, you know, that nudy pink. Although that, it's, it's a good description. Um, and so I'll talk a bit more about that one later. So I'd ordered that, and then Daisy Chain Stitchery popped up and posted that she was having a sale um, and of some fabric. So I was poking around there, and she had some small account Ada. Uh, so I thought, you know, I, I am more a linen stitcher, but I don't mind doing like smalls and or, like ornament sized things and things on Ada. And I, you know, I quite like 18 count Ada. And she had some by Paddock Lane Designs, who's another Aussie dyer who I've been wanting to try. So I thought, well, I'll grab a couple of pieces of this. So this is a blue sky. So it's just a, a, a mottled sky blue, which is pretty. And I've got that resting beach face from hands-on design and I've got the saltwater scrapbook or whatever it was that Lindy Stitches and the Blue Flower did together and I quite liked hands-on designs polar plunge three that she did at market as well so I just thought well, that, that blue will be pretty for beachy sort of things and then uh, I got this which is another sort of pale pink oops looking looking white in the camera it's a pale pink it's it's called blush and it is blush pink so. so I thought that was pretty as well so they were on sale they were on you know, pretty much half price so that was a bargain and then just when I thought well that's enough fabric I'm stocked up on fabric so Teresa posted uh, earlier this week or on the weekend I can't remember which that she has started dyeing fabric um, and so I thought well you've got to support new Aussie dyers um, I know I noticed that <laughs> Brenda and Laura gave uh, Nicola from Number 12 Stitch Co. Um, a shout out on their last floss tube, which is wonderful for Nicola, but I'm like, oh no, everyone's, all the Americans are going to buy all our, <laughs> all our lovely, all our lovely linen, because, you know, it's hard to get Fox and Rabbit here. Um, so hopefully Nicola can ramp up her production <laughs> if, if she suddenly blows up and we'll still be able to get it because, you know, I have stitched quite a bit on her stuff um, and I like it. So... From her, I got, uh, so this one, let me take it out of the packet, sorry, crinkle, crinkle. So she had lots of nice colours. So this one's called Sage. Mm, yeah, that's probably about right. So it's slightly mottled, sagey green. And I was looking for a green because I've got... This bottle and brush tree farm from Hands on Design, which I quite like. Now that is a more yellowy green on the pattern, but I think if I pull the colours and maybe adjust them slightly if I need to, that will look nice on a sagey green for Christmas as well. Because I just I just like how simple that is. Christmassy but not uber Christmassy. So I got the sage and then it was hard to, it's hard to pick and it's hard to tell from photos what colours are going to be. So I got this one. Don't get stuck. So this one's called Coconut. Um, and it's another sort of pale, pale pink. So if I hold that up against the ballet slippers. So this one's ballet slippers. And this is the coconut. You can see that this has got that more nudey, beigey tone. It's, it's still pink, but it's got that beigey tone to it, whereas this is a true sort of blush pink. I assume it's called coconut because in Australia we have like a confection that's often called coconut ice, which is just sugar and coconut sort of slice thing, which is popular with kids because it's super sweet. And people used to make it for like, you know, school, school fates, which are our equivalent of bake sales. Um, it's never my favourite, but I assume that's why it's called coconut and it's pale pink because that's always pale pink and white. Uh, lots of food colouring. Well, not lots of food colouring because it's only pale pink. But that that's what that is. So it feels really nice. I have yet to stitch on it. So th so those are the fabrics. And I think I think we've finally <laughs> we've finally come to the end of the purchases. Um, okay. So, um, We'll come back to these two when we talk about plants. Uh, always talk about the sage, but I, th I think I've got a Christmas small somewhere on my Whipco board. 
Um, in fact, I, I'm pretty sure I have. I think it was called for April and I thought, I'm not in the mood for Christmas. So I swapped it um, with something else that I'll talk about you shortly. So later in the year when it comes up again, I think this is probably likely to be the Christmas haul that I do. And now I have some fabric, so that's good. Okay. All right. And then, ooh, where have I put that then? So I did get some uh, happy mail present from stitching, a stitching related present from someone. Is actually my Christmas present and this friend and I have just been super slack about <laughs> catching up. Before Christmas we're all like, yeah, yeah, you know, after, after the Christmas rush in January, I'm on leave, you're on leave, um, we'll catch up. Um, and then she went away um, and then life happened. And so we caught up a couple of weeks ago and she gave me this. So this is um, bead beading art. So this fish is like printed on canvas and then you get all the beads and you, um, I think you can see, you sew the beads where it says to sew the beads. So it's kind of like a cross between a mill hill and diamond painting. <laughs> and it's not fully beaded like, yeah, because that would be ridiculous trying to do small beads so you get all the beads and and the pattern and things in there so that will be cool to do at some point that is going to be a big project i think uh so i will keep this in the box i think i'll have to get a q-snap so i can stretch it out and and sew all the beads on it that it fits without having to sew over try and tuck beaded fabric under a q-snap so i'll have to get it organized and do that so i can get a bigger q-snap that i can keep it on because they're not tiny but so that was interesting so that will be fun i'll be an expert beater by the time i finish that and the raven queen and hang on just one minute i just thought of something else i wanted to show you hey okay, back again because i realized the other thing that i have done quite a bit on uh this month is stitching some hexi flowers for my uh english paper piecing quilt um i'm doing like a rainbow hexi quilt which was a kit or a club subscription thing from uh, the Strawberry Thief in WA, who are a Liberty store. Um, and yeah, so they were running a club to do Hexico. I think it started in the pandemic and I said, I started it. I found it sort of Christmas, what was last year, 22, 21, and joined January 2022. So I got the, the packs for most of the year last year and was making all the hexes and now I've started sewing them together. So I think when I did my last one, Let's, let's, let's find the book of days without dropping everything on the floor. Easier said than done. All right. So last time I would have caught you up on hexes maybe, I think I had about 17 done. And now I have 32. So that's cool. Um, I've had some conferences and things uh, this month where I've been sitting listening and watching. And uh, I find when I'm doing that, Cross stitch sometimes takes a little bit too attention, but like stitching hexi flowers together doesn't take a lot of attention. Um, so I think I need 56 in total. So 32 is well over halfway now. So let's just quickly run through some, show you quickly. All right, I'm just gonna do this. So yeah, so the subscription kit is just for scrappy or rainbow, um, rainbow packs that you get each month. Um, so all different colours and I bought an, a couple of I bought, I think I bought one lot of pink so she sells the packs the whole time so you get rainbow or she has like colour themed ones so I got one extra lot of pinks and I'm one extra lots of teals and aquas so that it might have a little bit more of a cohesion um, overall and I've just bought I've just ordered another because I've ordered what I have Sure, we'll, I'm hoping will be the quilt binding because she had a sale on the Liberty Buyers binding. Um, and I thought, I'm going to get another pack of pink because you have to make some extras to, uh, when, when you sew the flowers into rows, you need some joining things and stuff. And I'm, I, I have I have enough already, but I just wanted to, you know, because there's a few in there, I'm like, oh, that fabric is really not my fave. Um, not many, but I thought if I get some more pinks, then I'll just have enough to make some more scrappy ones pinks here and there and then that'll that should be cohesive but oh, liberty fabric is just so pretty so pretty but i really like this Oop, this colorway <laughs> this color 
away of the strawberry thesis. And it's that one. Tears. So it's going to be interesting putting them all together, but it's going to be fun. And it'll be very pretty. And this one was the last one I did. All right, so there you go. That's that's my quilt. So over halfway. Um, so who knows? Over winter, if I'm stuck inside and watching TV and costume and things, maybe maybe I'll get them all made in winter. I was sort of vaguely thinking maybe I'll have all the flowers made by the end of the year, but who knows? It may depend on whether I get my act into gear and actually finish the crochet blanket that I started last year and did about three stripes on and decided that wasn't in the mood for crochet last winter so if I start doing that I'll probably do less um, hexy sewing together but depending on as I said how much stuff I end up zoom calls and things that I have to listen and watch but I'm off camera um, so I can take notes and sew a few seams and I'll do that um, all right so let's talk about pattern crushes I'll do the pattern crushes while we're making the world's longest, well, it's not the world's longest floss tube. There are people who regularly do one and a half, two hour floss tubes, but it will definitely be my longest floss tube, I think. All right, pattern crushes. So as I said, I've been thinking about samplers um, and excerpts, and I think, it, is it Kim, the contented needleworker? I think she does it a bit, like she'll take a part of sampler and just stitch what she wants. And so one of the things that popped up on her feed that I just thought, oh, that's really pretty. Um, so she was stitching some, so this is Eleanor Parr, um, which is a hat, so I think, which hands across the sea. Um, I should have written down the full name. Well, I'll put it up here if I remember, <laughs> if I, in my uh, massive editing effort to edit this. If So she was just stitching, I think, this band of birds from the top, and the birds are just really pretty. And we all know that I like to stitch a bird. So I thought, well, you could just stitch those four birds or, you know, pick some from the side or whatever in individual projects. I haven't bought this yet, but I thought that got me thinking about sampler excerpting and how that may be more my jam than stitching this entire, like, it, it's super pretty, but it, yeah, it's going to take like five years to stitch. And yeah, I just don't have big walls, as I've said before. But I could stitch some individual very cute pink and blue burbs. Anyway, it was her picture of it. It was just like, oh, wow, that looks really great in, in real life. You know how sometimes you look at the picture on the pattern and you go, oh, I don't know. Anyway, so, um, and then the other one that I really like. Uh, so one of Teresa Kogut's other market releases was this one, I think. It's called Beauty Phase. I think, do a bit of that. I think it was a market release. I may, I may be misspeaking, but I really like this girl in the center. Like I would not cross stitch her with a Bible and I would come up with a different verse because I am not religious. You do you boo. Um, what is my, hang on. iPad having a moment. But again, like there's something that, you know, I just like her and the wind and the animals around her. And I thought, you know, just that section would be just a really cute historical lady. I mean, if I'm going to have my kindred spirit ones and one I'm going to talk, a couple more I'm going to talk about. I thought historical ladies, got a blue wall, got a bird wall. Maybe I'll end up with a bunch of historical ladies as well. So that was another one. So that's Beauty Fades by Teresa Kogut. And then speaking of historical ladies, I think Michelle, Mama, Mama Loves You GB showed this one. So this is When Flowers Bloom by Stitches Through the Year. That's, that was a really, another really nice, like, historical girl. Just pretty. She has another one called Peony Time or something about peonies, which is also really pretty. As a cool historical lady. So that's nice. Um, and then... So, so there's a new group of like designer collectives, so the Stitches Collective, which is a bunch of uh, 
smaller independent designers um, who sort of banded together to self-promote and do some uh, cooperative efforts and learn from each other and stuff. So I learned about them from Dr. Christie. So I'm following them on Instagram and they've been featuring one of their members every day or every other day. And one of their members is Marumi Clark crafts who I have seen uh, pop up on other things but you know they showcase a few of their patterns and I saw she has lots of cool things um, she's a Rainian I think um, so this is called uh, Sepide I'm probably butchered I do not speak <laughs> do not speak Iranian Arabic I don't know that's bad I should know what language they speak in Iran shouldn't I um, but I just thought that was cool too and speaking of historical ladies so she is from the Persian mythology. Um, so I just like that one too. And then just, just for something completely different, let's get off the topic of historical ladies and single ladies. Uh, you know, I'm a cat girl. So I just thought this, this is from Moran Maran. And, you know, we've all seen on the internet cute videos of cats climbing themselves into weird glass containers and looking like they're made of liquid. I just thought that was cute. It's a lot of stitching, so I don't know if I would ever actually stitch it. But it's very cute. Maybe you could stitch one. I quite like patterns of things in jars too. Like I've seen quite a few, you know, there's like little towns in jars and people in jars and creatures in jars, in mason jars and stuff. I just think they're really cute. So I don't know what it is. I'm not sure I would like to be stuffed in a jar, but uh, in artwork, I like it. So that is my pattern crush. For the, for the moment. None of which I am buying because I tell you what, April, April and May and June probably need to be a, a no spend sort of situation in terms of craft supplies. We have enough craft supplies. We're not running out of craft projects. Famous last words until someone else releases something gorgeous, but I have enough to be going on with. So that should bring us to plans. So now I've just piled everything on top of everything. Okay. Let me get organised again. So, Whipco. Whipco calls for this month. Uh, uh, I think it was 5 and 17. So 5 for me is Raven Queen, which uh, was my new year, new start. I've had this pattern for a while. I was psyching myself out of stitching a mirabilia because mirabilias are huge. Um, I have to put a photo in because I didn't pull the pattern out. Um, but I decided to do it as a new year, new start. Um, and I think I worked on it that one day and then I put it on my whip go board and it hasn't come up until now. It is on there about four times, so I will stitch on it a bit. So I'll show you my you know exceedingly impressive start. Look at that. So this is, uh, I think it's called Blue Steel, Stormy Steel. It, it's an XJU Designs <laughs> fabric, uh, 32 count, I think, because that's what you stitch Mirabilia's on. And yes, it's going to take up a lot of that fabric. So they're big, they're big, she'll be big. Um, but yeah, so at least five days on that is on the cards for this month for Whipgo. And then the other one that got called, well... The Christmas one got called and I'm not in the mood. Um, and I've been thinking that I wanted to do this one, Shameless Hasin, which I bought, I don't know if it last year or the year before, because it makes me laugh. Um, and it's another historical lady. As someone who writes historical fantasy and has friends who write historical romance, she makes me laugh. Um, so when I ordered uh, Kindred Spirits, I ordered uh, a couple of the, I think they're Gentle Arts, are they Gentle Arts? Yeah, Gentle Arts threads. I had a look at the pattern and I thought, okay, so her skin and the words and the cheeks and the hair have the most stitches. Everything else is only a few stitches. Uh, well, the flower's got a bit, but I thought I'm not going to be that fussed if the flower is not highly variegated. I thought I'm just gonna buy because I didn't want to you know gender lights here are not cheap and I didn't want to buy like one to stitch like 20 stitches so I bought um, the cheek color the hair color and the skin color I think I've got two, two skeins of the 
here because I wasn't sure how much that was going to eat up. Um, so that's raspberry frost. That's really pretty. And then this is wood rose, which also is a nice uh, dusty rose sort of colour, well named. And then this is carriage black, which is just a nice variegated black. So I was going to do that and I was thinking, well, I don't know what fabric set she's on, sort of a pale, it looks like a pale grey. And I do have some platinum, which might work. Or I do have that, I think the flannel flower would be a little bit too mottled. Um, but I was thinking, I think if I ended up buying two pinks, I could either put it on the coconut or the ballet slippers. So I think the, she's not, she's not huge. How big is she? 120 by 75. And it's not a lot of stitching, like. You know, most of that is unstitched. The hair will be the biggest bit. So, I think she should fit on either piece. Uh, let's just do a bit of a... So this is on the ballet slippers. Which I think because it's that little bit browner, might be the winner. So it's a, it's a nice skin colour, but it's not going to... Like, I don't think you'll lose the pinks on it. Whereas on the coconut, it's that, oh, I don't know. I think you would lose some of this against the pink. I think the lighter shades in that in that um, raspberry frost are going to be quite similar to the blush. So I think I think this is what I'm thinking. Otherwise, I'll probably I've got some 36 count platinum stock standard so I got, which I did the uh, sheep on. So. Uh, that will probably be what I default to because I don't have another piece that's sort of that light grey. But I think that'd be cool because because she's a lady and ladies, well, some some ladies have. Well, this is you know beige Caucasian skin, isn't it? Other lady, other historical ladies had all sorts of coloured skin, but um, I think at the moment that is my winning option. Let me know if you think you like the other one better. Let's try that again. So this is ballet slippers. And then this is the coconut. I just think, yeah, I just think I'll lose some of the wood rose if I do that. But either would be pretty. Okay, so those are my plans. Uh, catch up the library in the next day or so. Uh, actually, you know, because I've just handed a book in, I'm just taking a few days off writing and writing admin and all that sort of stuff. I'm just going to have this weekend... Um, and Monday and Tuesday, I don't do day job on Mondays and Tuesdays. Well, usually I did Tuesday this week. That's why I have today off. Um, so I'm going to do four days of whatever the heck I want. So I imagine that will be some stitching, uh, what, some sewing sort of plans, whether that comes off, see a movie, go to a nursery, do something. My hair has gone all frizzy. It's a bit humid. It is cool, but weirdly humid. And I don't know why. I don't have the heater on or anything. It's just a little bit sticky. <sighs> Weather. It's weird. So, yeah. So, Raven Queen, Miss Prim, which I suspect I can probably finish this month. Um, it's just, yeah, not that big and not dense stitching. There's a few bits. The hair will take a bit and the cheeks and the flower, but the rest of it should be quick, I think. Um, so, if I finish her this month, I'll finish her this month. Raven Queen. Uh, do the library, catch up March, work out some knickknacks. I haven't thought of any knickknacks um, for this month other than finishing a book. So what did I do? Oh yeah, my friend and I went to go and see the Alexander McQueen exhibition that's at the National Gallery of Victoria at the moment last weekend. So that was fun. Um, I saw his exhibition that was in New York in, that must be like 2014 or 2015 or something, the last time I was in New York. Um, and that was amazing and this one wasn't quite as big um, but they sort of done it so because he took a lot of inspiration from different time periods and so they uh, staged his clothes or exhibited it they were exhibiting his pieces along with artworks and clothes and fabric pieces and things from 
from that time. So that was actually a really good way to do it. It was, it was good. And it had some pieces that I hadn't seen in New York. There was a few that I had seen in New York, but his clothes are gorgeous. Um, and it's very sad that he left too soon. Um, but that was fun. So a uh, bit of stitch up. They had one William, I think it was a William Morris sort of period, a big embroidery panel, florals, and it was just divine. Hand embroidered in, it looked like silk, but um, people used to do amazing things and we should just bring back gorgeous, gorgeous embroidered, embroidered clothes, except none of us want to pay what it would cost to have them made these days. But anyway, that is me. I have definitely talked for long enough. Um, I'm hoping that I will uh, be back probably in less than four weeks um, in April because it won't be quite so editing heavy. I'll start writing, get back to writing my next book and I will get my edits back and have to deal with those. But yeah, uh, I am on schedule and we have met the main deadline. So all is good. So anyway, uh, this weekend the clocks change, which always makes me feel sad. I really like having the light at the end of the day so I can go for a walk and those sorts of things but it is getting to be quite dark in the morning at 6 30 or 7 when my alarm goes off and you go oh it's still the middle of the night so so that would be nice but it does make me sad when you get to five o'clock five thirty and you go well now it's dark and I can't go for a walk so I just have to try and be organized and walk at lunchtime for the day job days at least but I hope you uh in the other hemisphere you're coming into spring which must be nice to come out of winter hope you're having a lovely time I hope you're doing uh, some lovely stitching and I will catch up with you sometime in April but thank you and see you next time